out of his mouth. Well, the Eskimos are well aware that they may face both Pierce and Jarius Jackson in this game tonight. They said they'd actually prefer to face Pierce because he is more likely to stay in the pocket, whereas Jarius Jackson, when you apply pressure, can scramble and is more likely to move and has more weapons. Buck Pierce just completed his first pass. Lyle Green, the fullback, close to first down yardage. Uh, that's interesting that the, the Edmonton Eskimos would say that they like to face Buck Pierce because mm -hmm. he's more of a pocket passer. And Brandon Guillory had two sacks last week. They had four as a team. And, of course, Fred Perry back in the lineup to go after. Now, Jarius Jackson will come in in short yarded situations. He's on the field now. So second... Jackson off the left side and Jarius has the first down last week just seven first downs 130 yards of offense for Buck Pierce in the first half part of it was and I'm not giving the BC Lions excuses by any means because I felt it was their worst game in probably two or three years under Wally Buono but Part of it was how good Edmonton was offensively. The time of possession difference in the first half was over 22 minutes for Edmonton to just over seven for the Lions. Ryan Grace Mullen is in the lineup, but the handoff to the short side, and Charles Roberts had a lot of room and has close to 17 into Edmonton territory. Now you get down blocking from the offensive line, Rob Murphy and the rest of that offensive line go one direction. Charles Roberts goes the opposite direction and really fooled Brandon Guillory off the edge, the defensive end. He read the old line going one way and went with him. Roberts went the opposite direction. Charles Roberts, seventh straight 1,000-yard season in the balance here as he came into tonight's game at 675. First down, Buck Pierce, and he has G. Roy Simon for more yards than his entire total last week as Simon down to the 45. Yeah, they couldn't get anything going, but when you look at last week, the dominance for Edmonton offensively, 17 first downs, 243 yards, and that is an amazing difference in time of possession. I've never seen it that lopsided ever in football, and that's why one of the reasons the Lions couldn't get going offensively. They just didn't have any opportunity in the first half. Eight for G. Roy, second and two. Receivers and number one's got the football and another first down. Now for Lion fans, Chris, it's it, the good news is this is their second series and they got Charles Roberts involved in the running game. And clearly there appears to be balance in the offense in the game plan here tonight because Jacques Chaptelain, the offensive coordinator, along with Dan Durazio for the BC Lions, last week gave the ball to Stephen Logan just five times on the ground. And what was strange is very early in the game, Logan ripped off 38 and had 13 the rest of the night. Charles Roberts has been frustrated by his lack of work in BC, met with Wally Bono on Monday, and because of an injury he will get tonight, Paris Jackson with the catch as the Lions move the football. Another first down inside the Edmonton 30. Well, Paris Jackson will move into the spot that Jason Claremont plays for the BC Lions. And, and right, he is right here. Usually you're going to see that spot just to the right of your screen. Number 19 is Paris Jackson. That's the spot that Jason Claremont plays. So Paris, Paris Jackson's gonna have to buckle up his chin strap because that spot gets hit off. Seventh play of the drive. And a first down. Play action fake to Roberts. And Paris Jackson, another catch, the most dangerous line receiver last week as he caught five for 91. The adjustments the Lions will make this week is to not only move Paris Jackson, as I mentioned, but they'll move G. Roy Simon around a bunch. And that time, Paris Jackson again moving into the slot. He's been a wide receiver. He's going to be the slot to the left side and runs that out. And how many times have we seen this year Jason Claremont be hit on that out by a corner hanging out there waiting for him to come to him? Second and two, two and a half yards for first down. And back to Roberts, right side. And Charles Roberts with a first and another BC first down to the 13. 
little giddy up from a guy we have seen very sparingly in BC so far. Well, you know, and you, you know one thing, if, if you're ever going to be motivated as a football player, it's going to be when you haven't been playing and, and you get your opportunity. I, you know, Charles Roberts, I know a lot of people have been saying uh, is that in the twilight of his career, but he, he thinks he's got a lot of years left and wants to prove it tonight. Nine more there. Averaging seven yards in the game and gets the ball again. And at least seven more for Charles Roberts inside the five. Well, in his last three games, just 14 start or 14 carries. And he is on his game so far tonight. Well, and, and, and when you when you talk about Charles Roberts, what it does here, the balance in the offense allows that aggressive offensive line to start this game by being aggressive and driving off the football, run blocking rather than having to sit on their heels and pass protect. Good looking drive, nine for Roberts, second and one. Back in short yardage, Jackson. And he'll dive down to the one. Augie Baranache and Kenny Onatolu combine on the tackle. They are also testing Fred Perry back in the lineup at defensive end for the Edmonton Eskimos. They'll bring in the big guys for down on the goal line, but right now they're testing Fred Perry's wind and, and his strength and to see if he's going to be able to hold up in his first game back from injury, and he's going to be lined up over either Rob Murphy or Jason Jimenez all night long. No Romero tonight, no Jim Davis. And now first and goal from the one. And Jackson hands off Charles Roberts into the end zone, capping the drive. And Charles Roberts has his third BC Lion touchdown. Teams play back to back. You always wonder what will be the adjustments. What are they going to be the adjustments, especially on the team that lost the first game of the back to back series? Well, clearly, the adjustment for the BC Lions in this game and game two of the back to back is Charles Roberts and getting the football to their tailback. An impressive drive and more offensive production than we really saw. Way to go, baby. For most of last okay, week, well. when the game was still in doubt, McCallum adds the extra point. And with just under six minutes remaining, first quarter, 7-0 Lions. Lions kick it off after an 11-play, 80-yard touchdown drive. Lenny Williams on the return, scampering out across the 45. Good return for the Eskimos. Next possession. As Ricky Ray and the Eskimos go to work, two and out on their first offensive possession. And now let's see if they can answer. And Ricky Ray wants to do it in a hurry. Kelly Campbell behind coverage. Dropped at the 14-yard line as he got in behind Dante March. Kelly Campbell starts from the opposite side. He's right here in your screen, and he's going to come all the way from that side down the field and then hit it on the fly. Dante Marsh becomes the trail position defender as he cannot keep up to the speed of Kelly Campbell. He starts on one side, goes in motion, and hits that line full speed. Nothing fancy about it. Just can I run by my man? And Kelly Campbell does it again. Tenth catch for 288 yards against the Lions. So far in their season series, that ripped off 47 yards of real estate. Ray with time, and now underneath, and too high for Matt Bertrand. Otis Floyd, good coverage on the play, as Ricky Ray didn't have a receiver open. Such a smooth runner, Kelly Campbell. When he gets that deep route going, he is tough to defend. That average, 23.7, number one in the CFL, and that's saying something when even the guy across the other sideline from him, G-Roy Simon, is below that. Tremendous speed, a smooth runner that comes out of his brakes very quickly. And when he gets behind you, you are not catching. Eskimos were 13 of 25 in second conversions last week. We've got a latecomer onto the field for the Lions. Timeout. BC. And BC did call a timeout to get Ricky Foley onto the field. Yeah, Ricky Foley, they, they realized, I think it was actually Brent Johnson that the uh, heads up defensive end there to notice that there were only three down linemen, not 
four, and, and you can see one, two, three, Cameron Wake over here. Red Johnson realized that, and I think he turns around. Number 97 says, you know, let, let's hold on a second. We're down a man here. And Tyrone Williams went to the sidelines, and nobody went in to take his spot until it was too late. So Otis Floyd as well calling the timeout. So that's gone, but they avoid taking a penalty deep in their own zone. Second and ten for the Eskimos. Short drop, time runs out, and Ray ducked under, and he's going to take off. Ricky Ray down inside the five has a big first down. I think we say this once a week. He's not a great runner, but he does find a way to escape. You know, and that's what he does here. He escapes through a very small and narrow escape alley, which is just to his right. Cameron Wake comes up and around the corner. He sneaks underneath of him and just enough to get himself the first down and a new set of a new set of downs. Chad Crawford with the tackle. But it is down at the four yard line. First and goal for Edmonton. And Crawford gets some attention for Bill Rochelt at the Lions bench. Lions pushed it in and now the Eskimos will try and do likewise. Flags down. And a pass for Kamau Peterson incomplete. Interesting formation for the BC Lions on defense. Rob Murphy, the left tackle, lines up on the defensive line. He is right there, number 56. Getting into Too many four point BC stance Move with the ball, two hands on the ground. To the goal. Automatic first getting down. a chance to play a little defense. On Charles Roberts' touchdown, Tyrone Williams, number 96, played on the offensive line. But was he supposed to be there? They had too many men on the field. Tyrone Williams conferring. Don't want to hang that on Rob because we don't know. No. But, but uh, Murphy and Williams had a little discussion there, and, and Murphy he's, stays in. Right, he's still in, so he was supposed to be there. But there was an extra guy in that defense for BC. And it gives the Eskimos a first down on the two. And the handoff is to A.J. Harris. Touchdown. A.J. Harris is back. And the Eskimos answer. Well, the Lions put a lot of meat in the middle. A lot of strength up here. One guy on the outside has got to turn this thing in. And that's Corey Banks for the BC Lions. If he can't turn that in, A.J. Harris gets the corner. Banks hesitates. He's blocked. A.J. Harris can get outside and get that ball in the end zone. Fifth touchdown of the year for Harris. And it caps a five-play 62-yard drive, and his family is here from Chicago to cheer on A.J. Coming back off an of MCL sprain. Prefontaine. Okay. Adds the tying point. 2.45 left first quarter, and we're locked at seven. 